The K Sam Wake Up Morning Show. All right, good morning to you. Carrie Underwood right there with uh, Out of That Truck. Yeah, on the back roads on Saturday night, uh, Michaela Lane. Uh, I uh, have her segment coming up at about 6 15 Saturday evening. She's got a new song called Neon. And uh, we'll be uh, hearing that song, and plus she's going to play a little bit for us as well. A uh, great young singer. She's from Oklahoma and uh, swung through Huntsville yesterday afternoon. Got to meet with her and uh, take some pictures and uh, talk with her just a bit. Good singer. Oh, that's Good singer. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you can check it out Saturday night on the back roads brought to you by Bill Thick Ford. The hardest working city in America is... Washington D.C. Say what? That's not a joke. That is. I mean, you got to be thinking that's some of the laziest people. I agree. There's slackers in the capital. Well, they didn't count them. Wallet Hub compared 116 of the big cities in the U.S. Uh, using metrics like employment rates, average work week hours, volunteer hours, percentage of unused vacation time, as well as average commute, and they came out and said. 10 of the hardest working cities in uh, America, D.C. was number one. Does gossiping and bullying people on social media count also I don't know. I don't for know work? They, I don't know if they considered those uh, metrics into the, I didn't think so. into the thing, but um, yeah. Uh, nine Texas cities were in the top 20. It's hardest working. Irving, by the way, Irving, Texas, up in the Metroplex, was number two. Oh, that's right good. Right behind D.C. Uh, I know driving through Irving is awful hard work. <laughs> I used to live up there, uh, but also uh, Dallas itself and Austin, Texas, I agree with that. made the uh, yeah. made the top ten list as well. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about that. DC, <laughs> yeah, no, they work they work hard at not working hard. I Maybe agree. That's what it is. There you go. Scotty McCreary and Cabin Solo on 101.7 KSAM, today's best country, and all your favorites teaming up with the Prison City Film Festival. It's February the 28th through March the 2nd at the Old Town Theater in downtown Huntsville. Independent filmmakers from all over the world bringing dozens and dozens and dozens of full-length features and short films and uh, you name it, everything in between. It's going to be a fantastic event. Uh, this is like their sixth or seventh year in a row. Yeah, it's huge. And it's getting bigger and bigger every year. So your chance to win tickets. We have tickets to give away here on the Wake Up Morning Show each day this week. To get your name into the drawing, go to uh, just pull out your phone and text us your name, 936-295-4102. Later this week, you'll also have a chance to win VIP passes. Jason Aldean on 101.7 KSAM your hometown radio station. Carla Zimmerman with you on the Midday Show on this Wednesday. Coming up, your Southeast Texas weather forecast, and then we got some Carrie Underwood and Thomas Red around the corner as well. Well, you've probably heard the hack about putting wet sy- wet siphons? <laughs> wet cell phones is what I was going for. I think I combined cell and iPhones, but anyway, you, you know that hack about putting your wet cell phone in, uh, in rice, right? Especially if you've panicked after dropping it in the toilet. Well, Apple is warning you not to do it. iPhones are more sophisticated than they used to be, and some can handle certain levels of water. They now have a liquid detection warning that tells you if your USB-C port gets wet. There are things you can do. You can dry the phone with a cloth, tap the phone gently to drain water from the ports, uh, leave the phone in a dry area with airflow, and avoid putting cables inside until it's completely dry. But they say don't insert a foreign object like a cotton swab or a paper towel into the connector, and don't put your iPhone in a bag of rice. Doing so could allow small particles of rice to damage your iPhone. So, now I, I don't know what it is for you Android users out there. I think you're still free at liberty to do whatever you want, but us Apple users have been warned. Brooks and Dunn and my Maria, 101.7 K Sam, your hometown radio station. Carlos Zimmerman with you on the midday show. You're listening to your lunchtime soundtrack, 90s at noon. Coming up, your Southeast Texas weather forecast. Also got some Joe Diffie and Red Akins around the corner as well. Well, we all know those annoying people at the grocery store. Not the workers per se, but uh, mostly just other people. Well, here are some of those annoying people at the grocery store. The grandma in front of you trying to pay by check. The employee who takes forever to show up to unlock the deodorant cage. The customer who makes the rest of the line wait to forget to get something that they forgot. You know that little brat that's melting down in the cereal aisle just because mama won't give him them lucky charms. You're getting frosted mini wheats instead. (laughs) The customer who ignores the take a number machine and just barks her deli order. 
Yeah. You know those idiots who haven't seen each other in a while and they block the aisles with their carts to catch up? I can't. I have to laugh at that because I've done that before. So, yes, the Z-Man is an idiot. Uh, you know that bagger who puts the chips at the bottom? Oh, grinds my gears. And, of course, customers who thump a melon and then return it to the pile. And whoever decided only songs by Peter Cetera can play overhead? Look, if I wanted to hear Peter Cetera, I'd tune into our sister station on the lake. Not at the grocery store. Come on. Tyler Hubber for you and back then right now on your hometown radio station. 101.7 KSAM. Good afternoon. I am Big Glenn Edwards. Ah, weather, uh, your weather forecast coming up here in just a few moments. So it's National Margarita Day, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, a poll found that 76% of Americans like margaritas. Only 7% have a full-on hatred for them. Uh, margaritas are the uh, third most ordered cocktail worldwide. Now that's according to Bacardi's most recent global survey. The other top five are gin and tonic, mojito, margarita, Bloody Mary, and uh, whiskey and Coke. 67% of us prefer frozen margaritas, but 3% of Americans say that is truly not a margarita, and they will judge you for it. You betcha. Uh, let's see here. Cheeseburgers, the top food that we are most likely to order with a frozen margarita. And uh, only 15% of us drink them while we're on vacation. Wow. I, you know, I remember when, when my bride and I were dating before we got married, um, the very first place, the very first time we went out to eat together, uh, we both had a margarita on ice, and I had never had it that way before. Again, we're talking 26 years ago or so. Uh, and that's just, that's a memory that sticks with me. Yeah. So, hey, what about you? Do you love margaritas? Jelly Roll here on 101.7 KSAM, playing today's best country and all of your favorites. So... I told you about this story about a woman in St. Petersburg named Kiki. She was dropping off her kid at a daycare just earlier this week on Tuesday when she briefly let her driver's side door open. That's when chaos started to ensue. Out of nowhere, three, not one, not two, but three German shepherds that came into and dashed into her vehicle. They refused to get out as well. Kiki said they were holding the car hostage. She didn't know what to do, so she called the police. Cops showed up. They also struggled to get the dogs out because three German Shepherds. Yeah. In a post on Facebook, they said some dogs will do anything for a car ride. They eventually coaxed the German Shepherds out using fish sticks. Let's be honest, that would probably get me out of the car. <laughs> the dogs did get a ride, however. They got a ride to the local animal urgent care where... They were watched until the owners were located. It's unclear what the owner's story is, but we're assuming they'd only be sent back to a good home. In the comments, another local said, this is not the first time these three have done this. They jumped into my son's car a couple years ago. He brought them home and we tracked down the owner. Another person said, I babysat them till he came and picked them up. They're overly friendly dogs. By the way, just a little update on the car itself. Doesn't seem like it was damaged, just a mess from the fur, from the dogs running around, all that fun stuff. So glad everybody's safe, glad everybody's all right. You know, glad the dogs are back home safe and sound, glad the car is okay, because that would have been a very expensive and weird insurance claim, I'm sure. <laughs> Barker McCollum, burn it down, at number 10 on the charts on KSAM.